morning everybody! So I don't know about you, but I've been spending a lot more time in my house lately and that has put me in a crafting mood. So today I wanted to show you a fun craft that you can use in your kitchen. So today we're going to talk about how to make hot pads. So these hot pads are crocheted, that means that you use a crochet hook and some yarn and you turn it into this um, square or oval or whatever shape you want um, so you can set your hot pots and pans on it. Um, so for today you will either need yarn or some string, a crochet hook, or just your fingers. I'll show you how to make it work no matter the supplies you have on hand. So let's get started. So first up for crocheting with your fingers, um, I'm using this thicker rope, but you can use also a string, a shoelace, anything you have on hand. And the first thing you want to do is tie a knot at the top. It doesn't have to be any fancy or special knot, just any knot that gets, creates a loop. Next up, you're going to take your index finger, stick it through that hole, just like you were going to put on a ring. And you're going to use your index finger as your crochet hook. And you can also use your thumb to help you out. And you're going to take this thread and you're going to pass it through that little hoop you've created. And now you, again, you have a new hoop on your finger. So same thing, you're gonna grab the thread on the other side, you're gonna pass it through to the other side. Grab the thread on the other side, pass it through and create a new loop. And as you can see, we're starting to create a chain. So I'm gonna keep going until I have an appropriate length. I think this is a pretty good place to stop. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to actually come back through and we're going to go through the stitches we just made to create, to start building some width or some um, height on this. So as you can see, we have a chain here and over here, I still have the loop on my finger um, and we're going to work this way now so we can start building up. So. The first thing that we need to do is we need to identify which stitch we're going into. This is going to be the uh, next stitch in. So we're going to look over, here's the stitch that we ended on, here's the next stitch in. So we're going to stick our finger, our crochet hook, into this stitch and we're going to stick it right in the top, right there. So you can see along this line, here's the top of a stitch, here's the top of a stitch, here's the top of the stitch. You're gonna just keep going in there and that, that's gonna be your target. So, so first up, take your finger with, um, it still has a loop on it and you're gonna go right through that stitch. You're gonna just kind of skewer it. So now you've got two loops on your finger and hold on to your pants now because it's about to get wild. You're gonna get another, um, you're going to loop the rope around your finger on the end, pull it through the first hole then you're gonna loop again and you're gonna pull it through then both of them so again you're left with a single loop on your finger let's see that one more time so first let's identify our next stitch we're gonna go into it's this one here we're gonna skewer that stitch pull the rope through one we have two loops on our finger now loop it over and pull that rope through again and now we have just one loop on our finger let's see that one more time find our stitch here it is skewer it pull the rope this rope on the other side through one so we have two loops on our finger loop it around again and we're gonna pull it through both of them so you can kind of start to see a pattern here we go through we pull through once to, for two loops and we pull through two of them for one loop. And now this is our last stitch here. We're still gonna skewer it, stick our finger in there like we're putting on two rings and oops, it's a little bit, my finger is just a little bit too big. So I'm actually gonna push it through with my other finger. There is no um, exactly right way to finger crochet. Well, I mean, there is, um, you definitely wanna be creating something with it, but whatever you need to do to get that rope through the loop, do it whatever method it takes. So remember we got, we pushed the rope through once. So we've got two loops on our finger. Now we 
pull it through again to have one loop on their finger. Now this is important. We've got one row, two rows all lined up for us. We're starting to build a nice, um, get the start of a nice square. Um, but before we start going back for the third row, we need to do just one extra stitch at the top. So just push your finger through, pick up the rope, just like at the beginning, and pull it through for just one loop. And that's important to do so um, that your project doesn't start to narrow and become a triangle. So you do that, flip it around, find your stitches. They're actually easier to see now. So here's a stitch, 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 here's a stitch. They're pretty easy to identify. And again, you're not going to go through the most recent stitch, you're gonna go on the second one in. You're gonna stick your finger through that stitch. I know it looks like we have three loops on our finger, but this counts as one stitch here. So don't get overwhelmed by that. You're gonna grab the thread on the other side, pull it through once, and then again, pull it through both of them. So we're back to one loop. And there we go. You just keep going back and forth, back and forth, um, repeating those steps until you reach a square, just like that. Now I wanted to show you how to finish it off. So you're gonna take some scissors and uh, cut it off. I would leave a good, good amount of string on there because um, you might need it. So to finish off your crochet project, you're gonna just pull, pull, pull that string all the way through. And you're gonna come around and see how this string goes through these two loops. I'm gonna take this string, put it through there one more time, and then tie a knot to seal it shut. And you might want to go around, find another loop, and tie one more knot. And then that's not it. Um, because if this knot comes undone, this whole thing will fall apart. I'm actually going to weave this string back into the crochet, crocheted hot pad. So as you can see, I'm doing that by just lifting up half of the stitch and pulling the string through, going the, lifting up a stitch, going the other way with a string, lifting a stitch, going the other way with a string. So it just kind of disappears right into the hot pad. And there we have it. I'm gonna also tuck this string in. Hot pad ready to go. It's nice and thick. It's nice and stiff. I'm confident this will protect your table or counter from a hot pot or pan. All right, so with your yarn, you want to start off in a similar way as your rope by tying a loop at the end of your string. Ta-da! And you don't want it super big. And so then you want to take your string and the best way I have found to uh, hold your crochet hook and string is keep your crochet hook in um, your right hand. Uh, actually, I don't know if you're left-handed, if it's easier to cro crochet um, with your left hand. So I apologize for all you lefties out there. I've never spoken to anybody who crochets left-handed, so I don't know how it's done. So take your crochet hook and then slip your string between your index finger and your middle finger and then between your ring finger and your pinky finger. So it's like it goes up, down underneath your middle and ring finger, and then up and over again above your pinky. So now what we're gonna do, we've got our loop on the hook. We're gonna use our index finger of our right hand to kind of push it down, hold it down, and we're gonna loop it over, and we're going to use the hook to pull that through. Let's see that again. Loop it over, use the hook to pull it through. And so now we have two stitches. Let's do that one more time. Loop it over and use the hook to pull it through. And there we go. And you don't want to be pulling this too tight right now because that will make it hard when you come back to do your second row. So keep it relatively loose and light. So hook it over, pull it through. 
hook it over, pull it through, hook it over, pull it through. I'm going to keep going until I have a length that's about rough, um, the size of the bottom of my pots and pans. All right, so I like this length here. I also like the color of my yarn. I like how it's like this soft gray ombre. So now I'm going to show you how to come back over and start making rows. All right, so for this part, um, we don't want to go into the most recent stitch. So the last one we did, the one that the tail of the yarn is still coming out, don't go into that one. Um, you want to go into the next one over. And all you're gonna do is just plunge your hook right into that stitch. So I can see the second stitch there. I'm going to just plunge my hook in there. And then I'm going to wrap the yarn over pull it through. Don't pull it through this one yet. So now we still have two loops on our hook and then we're going to, one more time, wrap over, pull through both of them. So let's look for the next stitch. We plunge our hook through it. We wrap over once and pull through once. We wrap over again and pull through both of them. So let's do that one more time. The next stitch, we plunge our hook into the middle of the stitch we take our yarn, we wrap it over, pull it through once, wrap over, pull through both of them. Plunge into the stitch, wrap over, pull through once, wrap over, pull through both of them. All right, so this is important. This is our last stitch here. So I plunge through the stitch, pull through once, pull through twice, just as normal. And now, before going back and creating our third row, we're just gonna do loop over, pull through once. That is very important to do um, so that you don't gradually, so that you continue a square shape. Otherwise, if you forget to do that extra loop, it will start to go in like a triangle. So make sure, let's see that one more time. So I'll take out that stitch. So here we are again at the last loop. All we're gonna do is plunge through the stitch, pull through once, pull through twice like normal, and then loop over and pull through once. Just making an extra little stitch there at the end. To finish this off, let's take our scissors, snip our yarn, remember leave a good chunk. Let's go ahead and pull that yarn all the way through. It's a little tight here, so I'm actually gonna kind of open it up. It's just where the yarn came through. I'm just creating a little space. I'm gonna loop it through. I'm gonna tie a little knot. And you know what, just for good measure, I'm gonna just pull it through. I'm gonna pull the yarn through one more time. Keep that loop open. And I'm going to tie one more knot. And then as before, I'm gonna weave the end of the tail back in two the hot pad. And actually I'm going to shorten the tail a little bit so I don't have to weave so much through. All right, and there we are. We have two hot pads, one crocheted with a yarn and a crochet hook. The other one crocheted with a thicker um, rope and finger. So as I said, uh, you can make a hot pad if you have the crochet hook and yarn on hand, but if not, um, you can use, I just found this rope in my laundry room. Um, we used to use it for hanging our clothes and now it is a nice hot pad. So that's a great way to reuse um, perhaps a bit of old rope that you're not uh, currently using. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you have a lot of fun make crocheting your hot pads. Um, it's a really fun activity to do uh, when you uh, have to spend a little bit more time at home than usual. And once you start to get the muscle memory of it, you can start to do it automatically. And I really love doing this while I'm listening to the radio, um, watching a television program, or even having a conversation with people. I find that by keeping my hands busy, I can listen better. So um, maybe it's the same for you. It's uh, kind of like a neat, uh, it's, it's like a fidget spinner, um, but you get to have uh, an actual finished product at the end of it, which is pretty cool. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.